This is our final thousand mile review of this Mocktober series and today we're cutting apart the Danner Bull Runs to see if they're still worth it after a thousand miles of wear by leaving its fate up to the wheel of death. And this video is sponsored by Rose Anvil because our sponsor dropped out last minute. So right now we've got the Mocktober Autumn Collection of wallets going on. We hand stitch every single one of these no sewing machines. And these Mocktober themed wallets are only available for a few more days and the Mocktober tees are only available for a few more days. So if you're doing some holiday shopping, consider picking up one of our wallets. It helps support the channel. It allows us to, to continue to improve the channel with better equipment, more ridiculous boots and shoes to cut apart. So thank you guys. And I'll put links to them in the description. Back to the video. Now let's go over the boot information. So the brand is Danner. The style is the Bull Run Lux. The color is sandstone. They weigh one pound seven ounces. They retail for $230 and they're made in the United States with imported parts. Now let's go over the details that we can gather about the condition of this boot before we cut it in half. And if you want to see the brand new version cut in half where we go through all the details in a lot more detail, I'll put a link to this video in the cards and the description. But for this video, we're trying to keep them short and concise. And we're only talking about the condition. So let's start with the leather. So this is a nubuck leather. And if you don't know what nubuck is, it's basically just a full grain leather that they've lightly sanded and buffed to give it more of a matte finish. And there really isn't a huge benefit to having new buck versus just a regular like full grain leather. Usually at the tanneries, they'll take the hides that have small blemishes in them and make them into new buck because they can sand away all the little small scars and bug bites that would otherwise be super obvious in the full grain leather. And the leather is super dry, but surprisingly there's no splits that go all the way through. There's no holes in the upper because it is a pretty thin leather. It's only... Let's find out. Just at two millimeters thick, a little over two millimeters. For being a thinner leather, it's held up really well. And usually people like a thinner leather because it's a little bit more breathable. It's a little bit more flexible. They're easy to break in, but they're not quite as durable as a, a three to three and a half millimeter thick leather. Next to the lining. So this is the biggest complaint I had about the brand new pair of Danners is this lining at the toe wraps all the way around and it turns into the heel counter cover, which I hate fabric counter covers because as you can see in this boot, it's completely worn out and we're all the way down to the actual counter material itself. And I don't think it really affects the longevity of these boots that much. It's just more of an annoyance having a bunch of like loose fabric flopping around and, and where, where it's worn through, you can create a little high spot where, which can give you blisters rather than a solid piece of leather that won't do that. And then next to the construction. So this is the first stitch down boot that we've seen in this Mocktober, which if you don't know what stitch down is compared to Goodyear welt, in a Goodyear welted boot, there's that separate strip that's called the welt that wraps all the way around the boot. Well, in a stitch down boot, instead of having a separate piece, the upper just flanges out and then it's stitched down to the midsole. And the biggest concern people have with a stitch down boot is if you happen to wear through where it's flanged out, your upper's kind of shot versus a good year welted boot. If you wear through the, the welt, you can always just sew a new one on. But judging from this boot for a light duty work boot, it seems like it's lasted pretty well and it'll easy, easily go through another resole without any issue. And then next to the lasting board, if we pull out the insole, which is a decent insole, underneath is that fiberboard material that we saw in the brand new one. And the biggest concern I had with that was it's gonna potentially split and crack and wear out faster than a leather lasting board would be. And if I stick my hand down in here, I can, I can feel that it's cracked. I just don't know if it's surface splits like the leather or if it's cracked all the, all the way through. So I guess we'll see if we get it cut in half. And then finally to the outsole. So this is, uh, Danner's, they say it's rubber based, but it's really similar in feel to the polyurethane based outsoles. And this is the type of outsole that has the shank integrated into the outsole. You can see right here where we pulled it out. And I, I liked that outsole idea until I saw this worn out one. And as you can see, that shank has started to poke through the outsole itself and causing, and it's causing premature wear right along that shank. You can literally see right where the shank is. So I'm no longer a big fan of that setup. I would way rather just have the shank inside of the boot somewhere so that this outsole has as much longevity as you can get because they're, these outsoles are known to wear out pretty quickly. And then finally to the overall condition of this boot. So this is the Lux version, which is separate from the regular bull runs in one major way. And that's the way that the mock toe is set up. The regular bull runs are set up a lot like the red wings and the whites where it's two pieces that make up the mock toe that is sewn together with that little stitch around the toe. The Lux version on the other hand is a single piece with that little stitch just puckering up the leather. And before the series, I might have leaned towards the two piece uh, toe, but now after seeing how the whites had worn through a little bit and, and same with the, the red wings, I almost would rather have a single piece because once you wear through these, the whole toe doesn't come apart like we saw in the whites. It just 
comes unraveled and you've got holes where water can seep in, but you can still restitch it by hand if you want. So from a, a durability and longevity standpoint, I think I'd rather have the single piece mock tail. I don't think it gives you quite as much room and it doesn't give you quite as much height as a two piece mock toe, but I still think I would rather have the durability of a single piece. So I think that covers everything about the outside of this boot. So now let's spin the wheel of death and cut this thing in half. What if I show you what it's like to be a victim like this guy? I missed. I never miss. Is this any better? Oh, I know what you're thinking. Come get some. I'm gonna take you to the bank, Senator Trent. To the blood bank. Ah! How does it feel to know you're about to die? One shot left in here. So huge thanks to Steve for cutting this in half. Now let's see what's inside. So right off the bat, you can see more clearly my issues with this lining. See how disintegrated it is? It's worn through several layers and now we're actually down to the counter material. And same at the toe, you can see where his toes have worn all the way through that. And that wouldn't happen with a leather lining. And now we can also see that this lasting board is completely shot. Because this fiber board is split all the way through the fiber board in several places. It's detaching from the midsole and it's just not going to last very long. It could, it could easily just fall apart and your boots are completely shot. And this is a perfect example of why I prefer that leather lasting board like in the whites and the red wings because with these they have those little teeny surface cracks but they're nowhere near as bad a condition as this fiber board is. And, it, and the, maybe the biggest thing is this fiber board can only compress so much versus a fat slab of leather gives you that enough material to compress to give you that custom footprint that, that adds a lot of that comfortability of having a custom footprint in your boot. And, and some of that's due to a Goodyear welt versus a stitch down construction, but even still, if you had enough leather in there, it would still compress about as much as this White's boot has. So initially before cutting this boot in half, I would have pretty easily said these will last at least one resole, maybe two resoles. But now seeing that this is completely falling apart, I wouldn't trust these boots for another resole. I just wouldn't, I wouldn't spend the money on it knowing that this lasting board is already falling apart and the lining's already falling apart and the internal components just aren't, in my opinion, worth resoling this boot again. So that brings us to the final question. Are the Danner Bull Run still worth it after a thousand miles of wear? I would say no. I don't think for $230 that this, this boot is your best option for that price range because we've seen a cheaper boot in the Carolinas be built to a similar quality with a few better materials. We've seen the Thursdays that are, are similarly built for cheaper and for $40 more, you can get a pair of whites, Perry mock toes that fix all the problems that you're ever gonna have with the Danners and they're owned by the same company. So let me know what you guys think of this boot and your own personal experiences with them if you've had these same flaws happen in your pair of bull runs. And uh, that's the last of the thousand mile reviews for this Mocktober. I couldn't find a pair of Carhartts. If, if someone has a pair of those, let me know because I, I still would like to cut a worn out version of those. I just couldn't find any. We got a couple more Mocktober videos left and then we got the Halloween special. It's gonna be really fun. So thank you guys. See ya.